over there, these sand dunes, and Steve in the ropes. They say you cannot get lost in Great Sand Dunes National Park. And I understand why. It's that. It's not very big. You got mountains on one side, the road on the other. And sand in between. And sand in between. So yeah, it's nearly impossible to get lost. Are you happy we're home? Yes! Woo! That was your sister. You gotta watch your sister. Meanwhile, look at that. That's pretty. Best place we've stayed in. All because of that one right there, behind the camera. I do my best. While we have a few minutes, I thought some of you guys might like to take a look at what it's like to boondock out in the middle of nowhere. So, we're just finishing up lunch, and I'm gonna show you what happens. First, we have 500 watts of solar on top of our Airstream. If you've been with us for a while, you know that. If not, well, Welcome. now you know. And I don't know if I've mentioned lately how much we love solar, but we absolutely love solar. We are completely off grid now because we're out in the middle of nowhere obviously as in a power pedestal. So we get all of our power from our 500 watts on top of the Airstream. We do not have to use a generator at all, all day long. We are running one computer, we're charging the Chromebook, we have my external monitor going, and Courtney also has a Chromebook that gets charged all day long. Our battery system supports all of that equipment through our solar and we never we never decrease battery power at all when the sun is out during the day. Once the sun goes down, obviously we're gonna decrease, but we turn the inverter off. We have a thousand watt pure sign inverter. We just turn that off at night once the sun goes down. And I think we lost 6% battery power last night. So when we woke up this morning, um, our battery bank was at 94%. So that is perfectly, perfectly okay. Um, not even close to really pushing our battery system. And quite honestly, we don't even have the best. Um, we have 220 usable amp hours of AGM batteries, which is better than lead acid, but not as good as lithium. Uh, far less expensive than lithium. But even with that setup, uh, we really don't have a problem most of the time. We also get asked about our showers a lot, whether we use campground showers or what we do when we're out in the middle of nowhere. We do have showers, by the way, you might notice I'm wearing a different shirt. Recorded this video at different times. So and he's clean, I'm not. And I'm clean. We <laughs> just hiked Great Sand Dunes, you'll see that in another video. Yeah. But I just took a shower, and let me show you how all that happens. Penny, I assure you, is not involved in the showering. <laughs> no, she likes the rug being there. Though, she likes Though it. she likes the rug being there. Yeah. So, what we do is, when we want to shower, we have a shower. We have a full shower, as you can see. With our shower. new oxygen shower head. Yes. That we installed earlier in the year. Basic shower, big enough for even me, and I'm like six, six foot even or so. Um, so I'm not huge, but it's big enough for me. And all we do is flip the hot water heater on. This is electric on this side, which we don't use obviously when we're not plugged in. This is gas, or in other words, propane. And uh, the propane is coming out of our two 40 pound tanks in the front, heating our water, delivering it to our shower and everywhere else in the Airstream. We don't turn on our water heater pretty much at all unless we're showering. Um, but we'd, like we said, we just 
If you're gonna hike the Great Sand Dune, don't shower till afterwards. Just saying. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> You'll have sand everywhere. Yeah. So we did like use the showers at the park. Rinse off showers. Outside to just kind of like get the main sand off, but this is gonna feel good. So yeah, we uh, turned it on and now we both take showers and that should be, we will do just one tank of water easy just between the two of us because we'll take military showers, not a big deal. Um, <clears throat> feel much cleaner and uh, and yeah, that's fine. We won't do this. We'll do this main showers like every two to three days when we're boondocking. If that, yeah. Otherwise we will do like <laughs> tea kettle showers. <laughs> Let me show you how that works. So the cold water that originally came out of the faucet or the shower before the hot water came, we put in our little tea kettle. Can't waste water. So if we're not taking a shower with this, we'll just use it for coffee and tea the next morning. But I am able to take an entire shower with just the water in the tea kettle. So I, we heat up the water and I take a shower with it in the shower, we I just use the shower or the water from the tea kettle. That way, we're not using the propane. I've gotten good enough. Tank, and and we're not using as much water. Yeah, I'm sure if you were in the navy or the military, this is like jump change for you. You could do this all day long. But I had to learn how to do that. Um, it took a couple tries, but I can get a really, really decent shower with just the water in a tea kettle, which is kind of cool. So I tend to do washcloth baths um, using, especially my new. Um, microfiber washcloths because they seem to work better but I'll just do like a full-on washcloth bath using hot water that we heated in the kettle and I don't even need that much water but um, that's because I don't have to wash my hair and as you can see we have full water jugs we can refill these in a lot of national parks national forests a lot, a lot of even even campgrounds when we leave so we have full water resources we have two more over here next to the girls uh, some wet dog food for them. And we have the blue jugs in the back of the truck, which are seven gallon. That's so we could refill our, our tank. We're only here for f four nights, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four nights. Um, and so we should be fine with what's in our tank because we've gone almost two weeks with... We have a... How big is our freshwater tank? 62. 62, uh, 62 gallons, 62 which gallons. is pretty big. Yes. Uh, so I guess that... I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview. If you have specific questions about what happens when we boondock, please leave them in the comments below and I will be sure to include them in a future video. Or if we've already covered that, we'll just give you a link to whatever video. So composting toilet, a few water um, conservation techniques, nice quick showers and solar for power. And that's about it. Yeah, it's so just a new process. It's not very hard. You just kind of get, you have to get used to a new way of doing things, yeah. but that's and all. And even these quick showers, they feel so good. <laughs> Especially after being sandblasted <laughs> at Great Sands National Park. See that video for Again, that. yes.